basement suddenly finds herself trapped under a 50-ton crane and a city mobilizes to save her. The crane operator is under arrest and the team of surgeons is attending the woman at this moment. Good evening. The crane collapse on Manhattan's east side endangered lives, closed major roads and touched off an investigation that will... Carol, and there's good news for Brigitte Gurney. The operation is over. The left leg is viable. She probably will have it. And the right leg has a 50-50 chance. Medical treatment started for Brigitte Gurney within minutes after the crane pinned her to that wall. Once we saw that uh, she could talk and that she was alert, I put her intravenous line in. We started giving her fluids. Eventually, we changed the fluids over to whole blood. Uh, she was put on oxygen. We put a device beneath her to protect her in case everything gave way. She was tied with a rope, with a safety rope, that we were worried about her neck and uh, back. Because she was losing blood, the doctors feared she would go into shock. There was great coordination in getting supplies from the hospital, get type-specific blood for her, so that she, although lost a tremendous amount of blood, uh, did not lose her blood pressure, which is a critical aspect. After six hours under the crane, Mrs. Gurney finally arrived at Bellevue. Mrs. Gurney was brought to this room, which the doctors call the trauma slot. Here, they got their first good look at her injuries, and they began to stabilize her condition by giving her fluids to guard against the dreaded shock, low blood pressure. From here, she went to the operating room, where teams of surgeons tried to save her legs. Under the crane's pressure for those many hours, her blood vessels could not bring nourishment to the muscles and nerves. They were dying. I have with me Dr. Daniel Baker about it and uh, we'll have to be watched very carefully. Any other injuries? No, they're all limited to the lower extremities. So the outlook for her? Well, she's in stable condition now. She still has to be watched very carefully. She's going to require several more operations and of course uh, things could turn at any moment. The, the amount of uh, crush injury from this massive piece of heavy equipment on the legs uh, caused tremendous amount of damage, which really can't be completely assessed for another 24 to 48 hours. What saved her life? I think all the credit really has to go to Terry Smith, the paramedic, who was on the scene immediately and started the intravenous. She had blood transfusion uh, right there uh, while she was pinned under the crane, as well as intravenous fluids, which really maintained her blood pressure and saved her life. And I think, I think he deserves all the credit for that. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Baker. Of yesterday that sort of really has, still has all of New York thinking, reading, wondering, and just still being amazed at the miracle of medical science and of hope, I guess, that was pulled off yesterday. With us this evening, and we're really glad to have him here in the studio, is Terry Smith, who is an emergency medical service paramedic who was the person who doctors at Bellevue now are crediting with actually saving Mrs. Gurney's life. Congratulations, first of all, Thank Terry. You. Uh, the doctors say that were it not for your quick thinking and correct action, she wouldn't have been strong enough to survive the ordeal. This time um, yesterday you were there. Yeah, uh, about now we were, they were making preparations for the removal. They were actually working at breaking away the uh, surface beneath her so that she could be released. Have you recovered? <laughs> Somewhat. It's been a pretty hectic day. I had to work again today. So you, you came here, to, you see, he's in uniform, yeah, not just for just us, obviously. Like what was your day like today, just briefly? Uh, it was still a little hectic. Uh, it was okay. a couple of calls that, you know, didn't make news, but were very serious. Everything is important. That's the thing about yeah. it in your work. Dr. Peter Salgo is with us, incidentally, so I want him to chime in at any point, because we want to just understand just what you did. Terry, just when you got there, just, you know, Play it back for me. Tell me in pictures, your pictures. Well, anytime you come up on those scenes where there's a potential of a lot of people injured, the first thing you have to do is scan and find out just how many injuries you have. You see, we're rolling some tape from yesterday, so maybe yeah. you can tell us what was happening here, if you can recall about, if you can tell what we're looking at. Yeah. At this point, um, I was underneath. I think I had already started the IV there. She's getting whole blood, and I was regulating uh, the blood flow to her arm. Now that blood came in from Bellevue, you'd gotten a blood sample, had it sent to Bellevue to have it typed right, to be right. sure she got the right blood. Yeah, uh, originally we had started off with, um, with um, blood that was not typed because they was really worried about the amount of blood loss that she was mm -hmm. going to sustain. Then they sent a type, I think it was with a motorcycle uh, officer, down to Bellevue, had it typed, picked up the units of blood and 
and drove it right back to the scene. But when scene. you first rolled up on the scene, your first reaction? First reaction was to find out how many people were injured. There were a couple of people injured standing near where the crane was, and uh, somebody, people were screaming, there's a lady underneath the crane. Um, my partner, Arthur Romano, started triaging the other uh, victims to see how serious they were and to get them prepared to be taken to out. Triage is to sort of sort them out okay. by, by the extent of their uh, injuries. And at that time, I climbed out on the, off the side of the uh, crane to get underneath and see if she was still alive. Just physically getting to her had to be tough. It was pretty rough. There was a piece of wood uh, that was uh, beside the back and it was loose. So stepping on it, you had to really hold on. You could have I, been a loser. Yeah, uh, a couple of times it crossed my mind, but it was so important to get down there and just see how she was doing. I mean, if she was still alive, and the, the way people were talking, they suspected she was. When I got down there, I was amazed by what I had found. Now, we were talking before. You told me that her blood pressure was about 120. 140, 140 over when you got to her. Yeah. That's amazing, because yes. you assume that someone in that position is going to be in shock, losing blood exactly. rapidly, in, in a funny kind of way. I guess the crane lying over her legs that way saved her life. It did, because it, what it did is it um, was pressing against the arteries and preventing blood loss. The, the majority of the damage was down in her legs, and the crane was actually uh, pressing against preventing any blood loss below the, no. the legs. What would have worried me was during the day you're giving her fluid, you're giving her blood, all of this is the right thing to do. And by the way, it was a tremendous thing to get the IV going in there. But she's being brought there out. There she is being brought out. Now that's the point that would have worried me because all day long she's got the crane preventing the blood flow to her lungs and pre uh, Where her were legs. Where were you at this point here? Okay, they were about to hand uh, hand her up. There, there I am right there, there at the helmet. Oh yeah. What mm -hmm. they did is they when they removed her, they knew um, from uh, what we had discussed about the potential dangers that once she was released. There was a potential of her losing a lot of blood. Because the crane would no longer be exactly. on her legs keeping her from bleeding. And those arteries would open back up and right. she was just a, a massive amount of blood loss. Now you told me that her blood pressure did fall when she Yeah, out. when we took her out, they, what they did is they handed her, uh, her to us and we put her down right in front and immediately we had it all set up that each paramedic had a specific responsibility. Mm -hmm. And we went to those responsibilities, inflating the mass suit to... Uh, counteract her loss of uh, blood pressure. I went and took a pulse on her, her inner arm and I couldn't get a pulse because she had lapsed into shock so that fast. teamwork was what made it go, but... Teamwork at the, the entire scene. Uh, you were just going teamwork. on the gut too though, on instinct and saying, well, this is what... We were, the entire time, our biggest concern was once that machine was released, once that pressure was released, uh, was also the coordination of the emergency service because once it was released, she could not lay there. Yes. She had to be out and brought over to us so we right. could do further treatment and get her to the surgeons. See television, unfortunately. It's funny, our time is going away from us. We can't take as much time as you sometimes have to. I wish that, that it's, it's amazing, yeah. the patience you had to show. What did Mrs. Gurney say to you? I just have to ask that. What do you recall? Oh, she was, she, she just discussed. We, you know, we kept her briefed on everything that was going on. She was worried about her children. Um, that uh, the impact uh, in case she did die at the scene, she asked for a priest, um, but she would be very. She was more worried about us. You know, uh, watch where you're stepping. Be careful. You know, you're gonna hurt yourself. And an amazing she, you know, woman. I guess. And she was just worried about you know when they lift the crane, what what the results are going to be. She wanted to know if it, she was going to have any pain once they lifted it up. Oh. Carolyn, all my years of watching these people do their job. This is probably the best example I've seen of coordination and good, quick thinking on the part of the paramedics. Great yeah, job. We had, we had a coordinator, a uh, captain that was at the scene who did terrific coordination. He coordinated not only us, but all of the services that were Just going on. Just one quick thing, did you get a pat on the back? <laughs> okay, I got to share something with you that just came across our wire. It's a statement from Mrs. Gurney issued from her hospital bed at Bellevue. And uh, these were her words this afternoon. She wants everybody to know that I have so much admiration, she says, for all the people who were with me and was so impressed at how human they were in addition to doing their job to get me out. They prayed with me and talked to me and gave me confidence. I'd like to say how grateful I am to the paramedics, doctors, police, and everyone who helped me. Nice. Just came through, just came across the line. That's really nice. Congratulations to you. I mean, this got to be the one you tell the grandkids about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, and I'm much luck to you. Thank you. Lynn Congratulations. Lynn Terry Smith. Thank you. And we'll have more from the other rescuers. Yes, well, Greg, we a little later. Some of the policemen. You know, it strikes me the, these paramedics are so cool. You think you'd be talking about a fainting at a bridge party? Or under a crane. <laughs> I get hurt. 
I don't want Terry Smith there. <laughs> that would be a good thing. Now, coming up, he acts, he sings. She had an opportunity to do one of those nice things this past fall when she attended a parents' weekend at her daughter's school in upstate New York. I got Better than me, obviously, well, he always does. Brickett believes that she has become stronger through each ordeal she has faced. She feels that the crane that nearly crushed out her life also gave it new meaning, renewing her optimism, her faith, and her connection to her family. And what about the construction site where all of this began? Well, it's now a 42-story luxury condominium called the Royale. And if you look just below the name, you will see the theme of the building, which ironically also serves as a reminder of that incredible day when the city of New York shut down to save one life. The building's theme, Remembrance of Things Past. We had hoped that this story would have a happy ending, but there is instead a tragic postscript. Brickett Gurney had begun to pick up the pieces of her life and had become very close to a Dr. Peter Rizzo, an orthopedic surgeon in New York. Her friends hoped that the relationship would lead to marriage. But last Thursday, just one week ago, Dr. Rizzo was shot in the head by a man with a history of mental problems. The doctor lapsed into a coma and died the next day. Sometimes there are things we just can't understand. We would like to offer Mrs. Gurney our deepest sympathy. Yeah, I'd like to echo that sympathy and also hope that fate has now finished testing Ms. Gurney. Thank you. That was my...